Welcome back, everybody, to Dungeon Brew. John and I are continuing our conversation on governments. Today, we're talking about democracy. Stay tuned. Welcome to Dungeon Brew. Welcome back, everybody, to Dungeon Brew. John and I are continuing our conversation in our governments series, where we're looking at a variety of different governments that you may include in your TTRPGs. Today, we're going to be talking about democracy, something that's probably familiar to most of us, but hopefully we'll surprise you with some different options that you may be able to include in your TTRPGs. John, why don't you start us off by telling us what is a democracy? Uh, well, a democracy, like we talked about in the first video, very simply is a government that is ruled by the people. Uh, the biggest thing with it is how much power is actually given to the people in a democracy. Uh, you can have everything from a direct democracy, which we're going to talk about, where there's a lot of power in the hands of the people, all the way through a totalitarian democracy, which I think we also mentioned in our autocracy video, where most of the power is actually in the hands of a single representative of the people, um, and not really much power is in the hands of the people at all. So there's a, there's a wide array of how that works exactly, but generally speaking, the power is supposed to be in the hands of the people in a democracy. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at maybe the first one here probably fits more into that idea of what a totalitarian democracy is. It's an anocracy where the power resides in that single individual. They have nearly unlimited power, uh, but there's participation with the people that's permitted through some limited mechanisms in which they vote on a variety of usually most often low impact issues, things that really don't matter in the grand scheme of things, but they're allowing to get those people's uh, opinions on those matters. It's not really a true democracy, like you mentioned, and oftentimes yeah. it's subject to conflict uh, due to the actual representation. They just don't have people from the populace that are being permitted to be involved in those decision-making processes. Right. So it's like, it's the kind of stuff where it's, you know, the people get to vote on, which day a parade takes place or something like that. And it's like, they don't get to vote whether or not the parade occurs. They only get to choose the day. And um, so it's like the, the big decision of whether or not we should have a parade in the honor of the person who is in charge is in the hands of the person who's in charge. They just get to go, well, do you want it on Saturday or Sunday? And that's the only decision that they get to make. So oftentimes um, there's kind of this, misconception that there is some kind of decision making taking place or from the outside maybe people are looking at it and going well there is a democracy the guy calls himself president or whatever but the reality of it is that the power really isn't in the hands of the people very much anymore at all yeah and that's what i was thinking too and it comes to things like taxation or the um the, the, the passing of goods like out to the people or what a mm -hmm. typical work day work work week looks like those things aren't really decided by the people yeah. uh, they may choose what day of the week they get paid on but they don't get to determine what they are actually getting paid exactly so <laughs> yeah uh, definitely one of those that is not very powerful now a very interesting one is what's called a demarchy and a demarchy is where you have a random pool of people. This is this is a representative democracy. Um, but what it is, is a pool of people are chosen at random that make decisions um, about law. And they're, they have power for a certain period of time. And then eventually a new pool is brought in um, to make decisions. Uh, generally, the pool of people is done by lottery. So they'll just kind of randomly go, okay, these... 10 or 20 or 50 or whoever are the people who are in charge of lawmaking for the next six years or something like that. And so any decisions that have to be made are then put into that pool. You don't have a whole lot of control over who is in that pool. You're going to have people who are highly educated and, and very informed about what's going on within the government. And then you have people who are uh, maybe fresh out of high school and, and don't really have a whole lot of, uh, know a whole lot of what's going on or anything else like that. Uh, it relies on, um, uh, it, it's intended to avoid issues that, that go along with like the representatives who make a habit out of just coming in and get recycled into that representation over and over and over again to help remove corruption. Um, but you end up with a number of unqualified individuals potentially making decisions for the law and for the country or the nation uh, instead. So it's, it's very much a give and take type situation. Sounds like a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it could be. 
I think it's very interesting though. Like I could see, I could see, especially in a fantasy setting where it's like something like this might come up where it's like, you Mm -hmm. have, you have a farmer and a miner and a, um, and uh, maybe a merchant and then a bunch of other random people who actually do have a great deal of wealth or, or status who are all in the same room trying to make decisions about the way the government should go. Our, our society was doing great until Joe and his cousins got thrown in there. Now we've been starving and at war for the last six years. Oh my, I can't even imagine. We got the whole clan in here. I don't know how that happened. Um, I, I, I it was think, rigged. I mean, the representative portion of this does kind of make sense. But in the situation where it's like you have... You, you maybe have this very wealthy merchant who got randomly thrown mm-hmm. into the pool. You could definitely see how corruption would occur because they have the wealth to maybe buy votes from the mm-hmm. less well-off people who get thrown into that that group to start making decisions. Um, there, mm-hmm. there is still that chance of corruption. The idea, though, is that um, you don't you don't have the power to be able to go in make decisions, get reelected, go in and make decisions, get reelected, and you're basically a lifetime representative who is able to be bought and sold by other powers. Which I guess kind of leads us into our next one, looking at a democratic republic, uh, which is another option you may look at. This is when power does reside within elected officials who then get to vote on the decisions around lawmaking in general. Uh, This type of government is usually subject to corruption, like you're talking about, because those elected officials can make a career out of remaining in power, um, allowing them to have kind of this uninterrupted tenure of power, and they then get to have an authority. So they they could be bought off by other people. They can have money flowing into them. They can have better campaigns to be pushing out there to kind of gain attention, uh, to allow them to be in the public's eyes, so that they continue to be elected into that place of authority. And the will of people may or may not be represented by the elected officials at that point. It, it could almost be utilized as a a, a means of manipulation um, just by being in the human psyche, being in the public eye, having the money and having the authority to put yourself constantly in the face of the public to continue to be reelected. Right. So you, definitely a situation where, you know, you have representatives and then those representatives, and once they have achieved power, which we, we do see a lot of that in the United States where somebody who gets elected mm-hmm. is more likely to be reelected than a, than a new comer. Um, uh, on the positive side, though, is that you have people with experience in politics instead of Joe and his friends right. <laughs> that are suddenly being thrown in that don't know anything about finance or economics yeah. and other making decisions. Which is an interesting retreat. point to bring up because this is this is the case with government <laughs> where there's almost there's there's no perfect system. There's always mm-hmm. some give and take. Do you want somebody who has more experience and is aware of how politics work and how government works, who is going to be able to get things done? potentially efficiently Mm -hmm. or do you want somebody who has no idea what's going on and they're just kind of willy-nilly making laws and they may or may not take into consideration Mm long-term effects of of what occurs as a result of that Mm -hmm. so it's very interesting um the the next option is a direct democracy which we mentioned at the start which this is basically just if there is a decision to be made a vote occurs in which all people who are maybe of a certain age, you know, are able to cast a vote to determine whether or not that decision goes through. Uh, generally, there has to be some kind of government, uh, there has to be some kind of representation so that those decisions can be, so that executed. something can be written up. You know, you, you have mm-hmm. to have somebody who writes up the law to put it mm-hmm. forward toward the people so that they can make a decision about whether or not they want that to come forward. But the decision ultimately is in the hands of the people. So it's it's a very interesting option, again, but uh, particularly if we're talking about something in a fantasy setting, it's going to be very slow moving, especially for larger countries, because mm-hmm. how do you get, you know, how are you getting all these votes from the far reaches and um, getting those cast and then them counted and brought into the capital or, where, or wherever so that that decision can be determined. So you, you might see something where it's like important, Important decisions are sometimes left in the hands of certain individuals, such as if there's a war uh, or a conflict that's going to occur. Maybe that's not something that uh, officially gets voted on. Um, initially, there's always a defense type situation where they're allowed to make a, 
take immediate action, um, but in other decisions about whether or not they're going to increase taxes or something, that is a vote that would go out to the people so that the people could make a decision, and then the votes would be tallied and the decision would be made one way or another. Yeah, this is an interesting one to me, primarily because it's been brought up in more recent uh conversations like in the United States of America on how this could be utilized as a direct democracy, you know, looking yeah. at the popular vote, putting an app on people's phones where they can just quickly vote on issues and everybody's getting a little ding and they're able to be more representative in that nature by doing that. But you're right in terms of like a fantasy setting, this can be really complex to be able to get that full representation and having people decide on things. Um, and I think it is important, like you said, letting, knowing that there are still elected officials that make decisions around emergency situations let's say that you know you have a dragon that flies over and burns down a village and they need emergency relief and or you know food and shelter and water to kind of recover right. from this tragedy you don't want to then like go across the country and voting and be like so do you think we should help the, you know right the, yeah. the, the, the so, surfs out and, and then be like no 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 I'll let them suffer or it's going to take you half a year to get presumably <laughs> There would be a vote that occurred prior to this to say, in the event that X occurs, mm -hmm. what is the correct response? So that that should be a decision that's probably made in the in the foreground, <laughs> I would <laughs> hope, rather than uh, do we devote make a vote afterwards. Um, the thing about we've never had a dragon situation before. Yeah. That's true. Uh, the yeah. thing is about a direct democracy is it's very similar to the demarchy in which you are more likely to have a number of unqualified or uh, unaware citizens casting votes on things with the same weight as experts or scholars or knowledgeable people, mm -hmm. which um, is, is kind of that idea. It's like, we're going to bring two people on to have a conversation about, you know, whatever hot topic. One of them is a scientist mm -hmm. who has years of experience and is very well, very well voiced in this. And this is Jim and <laughs> they're going to have a conversation. It gives them equal weight within you know mm -hmm. a, a a venue to voice their opinions on something one of them is an expert one of them is qualified one of them is jim and i think that that is kind of the direct democracy failing there mm -hmm. but you should keep in mind when you're talking about adding this in potentially is that you may have the experts and the experts that know exactly how to fix the economy or to deal with the drought or do whatever but you have a bunch of unqualified people who are casting votes that don't necessarily agree with that completely unrelated but as you speak of this gym being pulled into the conversation i'm just thinking of steve the skimmy in that skit for snl where he's an offender and they pull a press conference and bring him in and he doesn't even realize he's the subject of a conversation yeah all right uh so oh, the, the next one in this list would be an electocracy uh this is where power resides in an individual who's been voted into a position by the people oftentimes giving them extensive power over decision-making and being able to move things forward. But this type of government can be subject to corruption and violence because this ruler oftentimes is able to keep that power once it's been taken, and they can use their authority to extend their rulership indefinitely. So this too kind of falls into what you were talking about mm -hmm. in terms of that authoritarian um, democracy, where it's just right. like they've been voted into power, they, they got that position going through the democratic process, and now that they're in that position, they can use their authority to prevent themselves from being unseated. Right. It's it's kind of the idea of we're going to vote in a president and the president has all the power. So we've mm -hmm. made a decision to, to elect somebody into that position. And once they're in that position and they have all that power, what are the checks or the balances that prevent them from keeping it for any period of time? What's to stop them from changing the law to say that I, you know, I don't need to give up my power, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that because they have so much authority to begin with. So yeah, um, answer that 1980s clip of "I Got the Power" song, right, right there. So, but right. yeah, it's a, it's another way of of kind of that um, that autocrat, the totalitarian style democracy that comes in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last one on our list is the representative democracy, which is very similar in some ways to a democratic republic, um, with the mm -hmm. exception that the way a representative democracy is supposed to be handled is that 
the you elect officials and the officials have control over certain aspects of government so it's not necessarily being control not being in control of the entire government or or something along those lines it's they might be somebody who goes you know we're electing these people to be in control of you know taxation we're electing these people to be in control of um environmental protection or whatever <laughs> or dragon control i guess so uh the electo the elected officials um have control over decisions and the people don't have control until they elect new new representatives so usually they have term limits they'll be in there for you know two four six eight ten mm-hmm. whatever years and then every so often there will be a new uh election to put in new officials to be in control over those aspects of government again in all truth, even though the United States is kind of a mixture of many of these concepts, this right. is probably what's truest to the United States. So we, we have the judicial branch, the legislative branch, the executive branch. There's term limits. Right. There's committees within each one of those that make decisions over particular areas that are elected into place. And, and although we may only have a say in electing certain officials into those places, um, those officials then have the power then to make decisions around different topics or right and that's uh, that's sub- you know subject. that's federal government there's also local or state governments that, are, mm-hmm. that operate in the same way in a micro scale so the macro yeah. is federal representative democracy the micro is also a representative democracy you, you elect officials to uh, take care of city concerns state concerns etc county concerns um, and mm-hmm. each one of them are elected into position and then once ever whenever they are um the election period comes around, somebody new can be elected into it. Uh, It it suffers from the same Mm. difficulties that we've talked about with the democratic Republic in that um, people who get into power have a tendency to stay into power uh, unless there are term limits that prevent them from being Mm. reelected. Then they're more likely to be lifers who go in there and get reelected time after time, because once they're an incumbent, it's difficult to unseat them. Um, Mm -hmm. So it results in, in corruption issues. So, uh, but well, we got, yeah, I was going to say so, for democracy, I, I think that that's kind of it for me. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, it's, it, I think it's one that is inherently more familiar to most of us, um, just because it's kind of the government of today for many, many countries in the world. It's mm-hmm. just paying attention to the different ways that it can take place or, or take shape and, um, the, the variety of ways that you can make a democracy um, different or interesting within the world if you want that to take place. Yeah, I think the, the key piece is you're playing with these concepts, you're maybe even looking at inventing your own around democratic values, is that it's about putting the power back into the people. It's about to be the will of the people in some capacity, and so that's going to be an ingredient within this type of governance. Right, and paying attention to do the does the power actually go with the people or is it just kind mm-hmm. of a superficial type situation mm-hmm. where you know they say that the people have power but in the can uh, in in the instance of something like an anocracy uh, they don't really make important decisions you know so that type of thing i think can be very interesting from a uh, political style campaign if, mm-hmm. if you want to run something like that go well it's a democracy it's always been a democracy it's like well not really they get to choose what uniform colors they have. They don't make important decisions. They still have to wear the uniform. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, right. uh, I think for democracy, I, that's all that I've got. Do you have anything else you want to add, Joshua? I don't. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video on democracy in our government series. And tune in next week as we dive into the next topic. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Judge and Crow.